Okay, so here we are in the pixel art assignment. Let's run through this a little bit. This can be a little bit tricky. Um, and let me drag this down here. All right, we're going to learn about drawing pixels in this live view, Xcode live view. Now, um, in order to get this to work in the first place, uh, I had to switch. I had to switch this to manual. So switch it to manually run by clicking and holding, selecting manual run, and then also go up here into the uh, live view or this button here and click and select live view. So make sure there's a check mark next to live view. It should look like this. So this it should look like this and this. And if that's the case, then close Xcode. If it's not working, still, like you click, uh, so you come over here and you click play. And if it doesn't show you something here after a minute or two, then close Xcode. Make sure you close all the windows associated with Xcode too. And, uh, and try again. So also close the simulator for Xcode, so make sure the simulator is not running as well in case you were building an app before this. You might even have to close out additional Xcode, uh, like I have another Xcode window open up here, and I think I have to close that out and restart as well. So let's give that a shot. So I'm closing that second window now. I'm going to actually even stop what's doing here. I'll close this out. And then I'm going to quit Xcode. Not just close the window, but quit Xcode completely. Sorry to have to do this, but sometimes Xcode acts a little weird. And this time I'm going to launch Xcode and I'm going to open my student file here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to, I'm on the first page here, second page here. I'm going to try to click play and see what happens. Drink some coffee, be patient. Boom. Thank goodness, right? So hopefully that works for you too. All right, so you can see it dropped these two lines of code here, dropped a couple pixels. They're not real pixels, are they? They're big squares. But let's say that they're pixels. So there's a blue one, there's a yellow one, and there's some coordinates to, to uh, create the pixels. There's one at the zero, zero, which is here down at the bottom, and one that's at the y, uh, or x, I'm sorry, the x coordinate of 1, so that means like over 1, and up 3. Boink, boink, boink. So it's got to be, these numbers have to be, when you're creating these pixels, they should be under 7, under the number 7, because this is like, 7 is as high as it'll go here, as wide as it'll go. Otherwise, your pixel will be drawn off the screen. Uh, okay, so the instructions say uncomment the following line. That's how you do that. You delete those slashes. And then inside of here, you uh, click somewhere after this colon here, and press dot, like period. And you'll see there's a drop down here, so now you can choose a color you want. Don't choose the clear color, that's invisible. But let's choose magenta for now. So I'm gonna double click on that to select that there, or you could just type it out, I suppose. But I'm lazy, so I click on it, and boom, there's my magenta pixel. And you'll see if I adjust this number here, it kinda moves the pixel around. Yep, okay, great. This next section they wanna show you about completion. Uh, or about initializers. So what it is is um, there's this thing called color that that, that uh, exists and um, that someone made and it's got a couple initializers. So this structure or class has these things that are requirements to create a new color. So to create a new color, let's take a look here. So it says click inside the parentheses here and hit escape. And now you can see there's all these different ways to create a color. So when you're creating your objects, you can create a certain set of requirements to create the thing. Like you can create them by red, green, blue, alpha, red, green, blue, maybe hue, saturation, brightness, alpha. Oh, so there's a bunch of different ways to create a color. Let's try using um, the red, green, blue, alpha. Why not? So let's make red. I don't say, and I don't know. Let's see if it's got any more information about this. If I click on it. It doesn't really say, but you know, I wonder how much, let's say, um, maybe it's like from zero to one. So I'm gonna make the red uh, 0.9, 0.9, we'll make the green 0.2, and then the blue 0.0, alpha is 1.0. Sometimes like when defining colors, they'll have you uh, write a number from zero to one, basically. So let's see if that's the thing. So if this is if this works, then it should be at seven seven. It should show something pretty reddish up here, reddish and slightly greenish. 
Oh, it's given us an error. Let's take a look. What is the error? Click on the red. Expected a parenthesis. Okay. Well, that's probably my fault. Let's take a closer look at this. So if I, the only thing that's changed is I made this code here. So it's probably, the problem's probably somewhere here, right? So let's click on this end parentheses here. And you see this thing flashes here, right? Flash. So that's where this parentheses corresponds to the starting. This starts here, ends here. But what about this parentheses, right? It's not, there's no ending parentheses for that. So that's my fault. I'm going to put a closing parentheses there, and now it's closed off. Now let's try running it. Boom, there it is. Almost instantly. Wow, that was fast. So that's the deal. You want to uh, make a number from 0 to 1 for this. Um, okay, it wants you to try to create a simple graphic by placing pixels. So try to make a smiley face or a frowny face or a heart or try to make something with the pixels here. So basically uh, add some lines down here and make some more pixels. All right, let's keep going because I don't want to take up your whole, uh, your whole, all of your time. And I don't want to give this whole assignment away to you free of charge. Just kidding. I don't want to ruin the learning experience. So try changing the background color. OK, so go ahead and do that. Make it red. So I'll run through this one, add a couple pixels, and check that the background, background color changes, but the pixels don't change because it's already set. And uh, yeah, when you run this code, like it runs from top to bottom very quickly. So if you set background color red here, and then background color white down here below, It'll just show you the white because it's going to happen so fast. You won't see it. This next page is kind of complicated. So let's run through this one a little bit, page four. Um, this is where it wants you to complete this function and then create your own function. So it wants you to draw, create a function to draw a horizontal line. And then it wants you to create a function to draw a vertical line. So the, here's the horizontal line function. They've already created this for you, except you've got to finish the code inside here. So we're going to use that same um, uh, display.setPixel. Uh, code in there. And in this case, we're going to make the x coordinate equal to x plus i. I'll tell you why in a second. And then this to uh, y, the y coordinate to y. And then the color, let's make this, I don't know, let's make it blue for funsies. That's black. Blue. Okay. So what this is doing is the for loop is looping through the length that you pass in. And then uh, let's print the i so we can see what those numbers are. But So it's going to loop through the length, and it's going to add 1 to, or add, it's going to add i to the x-coordinate. So let's just call the function and see what happens, shall we? So it's called hline. That's the one we made. Boom. We're going to say the x is at uh, 2 and the y is at 2 and the length is going to be 3 and the color is going to be white. Oh, interesting. I, I said the color is blue here, but we should probably just make the color into the color. So what that means is that like when you pass the color in, that's the color it sets the line. Boom, look at that. All right, we drew a horizontal line. So let's take a look at the print statements, though. That's what's kind of interesting. 0, 1, 2. So there's three uh, numbers that printed out down here. 0, the number 1, the number 2. And so that's because I said the length is 3. What if I change the length to 6? Let's see what happens. It should be like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? See the numbers here? So if this is the length. It's looping through the whole length. And it's passing in this number, the i number. So um, basically the for loop is looping uh, between 0 and the number we pass in, which is 6, and subtracting 1 because of the way the graph is laid out. I suppose, you know, I, I suppose you could probably do this. But let's do some experimenting and see. So let's say from 1 to the length, So now let's run it again. We should get the same result, except it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then it says a warning, pixel 8 is out of range. OK. That's just because the final pixel here, I believe, is out of range. But let's go ahead and make this, uh, let's make it start at uh, 0 instead, shall we? Let's see what happens. Scoots it over uh, 1. 2, 
here. So it says one on each side. So it's really hard to know how many pixels there are. I'm actually going to set a pixel. Display set pixel. And we'll set it at uh, 0, 0, and make it red. I see. So the reason why we're doing the subtraction deal is because this square starts at 0, right? So if we wanted the horizontal line to start right at the beginning here, we can't do that unless the number is actually 0. So that's why, you see, that's why we've got this minus length minus 1, which gets it down to 0, which is this starting position here. And then we got to start for 0 in length. Okay, so that's why it's done that way. That way the white line scoots over to the front here. So hopefully that makes a little more sense. Now, the other thing it wants you to do is to take this function, copy it, paste it down here, and change it to a vertical line. But then you've got to change some stuff in here. I'll let you figure out how to uh, make it work. Okay, moving on. All right, so we are on page five now. Um, and it wants you to create a new function down here called uh, block, a block function. So instead of horizontal line, vertical line, we want a function called block. So I'm going to get you started on this and let you finish it. So the function is called block, and uh, I'm just going to make the structure of the function really quick. So it's the parentheses and the curly braces. That's the basic, basic function. Now it says the uh, it takes five parameters, x, y, width, height, color. All right, so... Let's do this again. So it looks like we got X and Y here, and color here, and length. So I'm just going to actually copy this because I'm lazy and paste it in between there. So now we got X, Y. And instead of length, we're going to make it width, uh, color. We also need height. So I'm going to type H E I G H T height. Uh, it's an integer, and uh, put a comma there too. So now we've got a function that takes in X, Y, width, height and color. X, Y, width, height, color. Use the hline function repeatedly to draw the block. I see. So it wants you to kind of like go and draw the block down. Looks like they've already got the hline function in here for you. So now your trick is, let's think about this. So someone's going to call the function, let, let me just call it down here just for fun, uh, block. And let's say we want to make a block that, oh my gosh, okay, there we go. A block that is, it starts at the two position and two position y. It's also, let's say, it's two pixels wide and three pixels high, and the color is blue. Okay, so right, it's passing all that stuff in. So this is the starting position, x and y, and then we, it starts to draw the block. It wants to draw the block um, up or down from there. So your challenge, and this is kind of a challenge, is to come on in here and take what you've got here and draw it out. Okay, so we got our for loop. I mean, we got our block set up, the block function. Now we need to write how it's going to work. Let's, the way I like to do sometimes when I get confused is I type out a bunch of comments, right? And it helps me work it out in my head. So we're going to use the, um, we're going to draw horizontal lines to create block uh, but we have to uh, figure out how many so how many rows is it going to be how many vertical rows is the box basically that we want to create or the block that we want to make okay and then we want to loop over those loop over and draw, loop over and draw lines for each uh, vertical row. Something like that. So actually this is going to come second. So how many vertical lines of the row, loop over, and then draw the lines for each vertical row. This is These are my instructions. So how do we do that? Like, let's see. How many vertical rows is the block? Well, 
we're passing in the xy coordinate, but that's like just where does the block go. The real important information for this is how wide is the block and how tall is the block. So the width of the block is going to be the length of the line, right? So how wide the block is, is how long the line you're going to draw, the horizontal line you're going to draw. Okay, and then the height of the block is, the vertical height of the block is this. How high is the block? How many rows is the block? So let's see, uh, we're going to, so now we're going to draw the lines, right? So but we have to first make a for loop. So it's going to be for each row in height. Okay, so for each row in the height, so for each each row, and you can you know say it says for i in zero blah blah blah. You can this i you can name it whatever you want. In my case, I'm naming it each row in height. But you can't actually just uh, int is in the sequence, so that's why you've got to do this like zero dot. 0 dot 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 from 0 to the height for each row do something in here so this is the loop so the answer to this first question is height is how many rows tall okay loop over height and then draw lines for each. So and we're going to draw a horizontal line, right? Because that's what it said to do. So uh, inside of here, we're going to do H line. And the length, so the length of the line is important. The X and the Y is like, I think you just want this to be 0, 0. Oh, no, no, no. The X and the Y is X and Y. So we're passing x in, and we're passing y in. That's where the box is going to be drawn. And the length of the line is going to be the width, right? The width is the... That's a little confusing. The length is the width, but whatever. The length of the horizontal line is how wide the box is, essentially. Uh, and the color is just going to be the color that you pass in also from up here. Okay, this is kind of cool. Let's see what we got. Uh, I think that might be it. I'm going to clean this up a little bit and let's run it. I'm going to leave those comments in for myself so I know what the heck is going on. And I'm just going to make some, delete some empty space here. And now we've got the block down here. I'm going to try to run it and see what happens. I don't know. Oh! <laughs> okay. It did something, right? What's the warning here? Immutable values never used. Okay. Yeah, I'm not using this each row. Uh, that's probably my problem here. Is I've got to pass the each row in. So for each row, let me think about this. What's the each row represent? It represents the height. And so in the previous case, it was the i. So um, since it's height, we probably want to look at the y here. And we want it to be plus each row. So adding to each row. Y adding to each row. Let's run it again, see what happens. Cool. So you notice this box looks like way different than the previous box. Like the pixel size is different. So it looks like they made it a lot bigger. So I'm going to try, instead of making this box it's small, let's try to make it bigger. Let's try to make it like, I don't know, 10 pixels wide and uh, 30 pixels tall. Something like that. So it should stretch out further. And let's try to start it down, I don't know, 10 pixels down also. Let's go ahead and run it. Zip. Cool, did you see that? All right, I think we got this. So this is the for loop. And this could be, you could rename this whatever you want if it makes it more readable for you. This each row could be I or whatever, if you like. I like it being a word. Uh, okay, fill speed. If you create a large enough block, you might observe the playground reaching its speed limit. I saw that too. Better solution is to modify your block function to use a nested loop. Okay, cool. Now we're getting fancy. Creating a rectangular area allows you to iterate over x and y. So, 
in reality, this isn't like a superb solution for real applications because nested loops actually are kind of slower in the end. But because we're running through this, the way that this is being called, this would be a more efficient solution. So I like, I like it. Let's let's go with it. So let's call this. It says call it to see how it works. So let's run nested print. And uh, it printed all this stuff out really quickly. So now it wants you to create a new block function. So the new block function, it wants you to kind of use this nested concept. Well, this is kind of a pain in the butt, but all right, let's do it. So it says the algorithm for your new block function works like this. Create an empty array of pixels for each x value, for each y value, for each x value, for each y value, create a pixel with x and y and add it to the array. So this is the nested part, so that's why it looks, it reads kind of weird. Batch set the pixels in the array. Okay, it's not really giving you a lot of information to get started here, so let me run you through this. All right, so I'm gonna, it doesn't say what the call the block, or call the block function does it. So I'll just call this function and I'll call it um, speedy block. And let's just create the function with the parentheses and the curly brace to get started. Um, so we're going to need a bunch of stuff, right? We're going to still need to know the x value and the y value. And we're going to need to know the width and the height of the block and the color of the block. All that stuff that we have up here. All that's, We still need all that stuff, right? So I'm going to take this all this stuff here, copy it, and throw it down here in our fast block. Speedy block. Okay, so that's still a legitimate function. Now it says create an empty array of pixels. Well, what the heck are pixels? Well, this assignment has this thing that's created called pixels. So an, how do we make an empty array of pixels? Uh, you would go var uh, pixels. And assign it to square brackets pixel and closing square bracket. So that is oh that's not correct. Sorry. You're gonna make it of type. So var pixel colon of type array of pixels, and then I'm gonna equal an empty array. So just uh, empty square brackets here. So that's creating. Uh, this thing called pixels, and it's it's there's nothing in it yet, see, but it's gonna be an empty array of pixels. It's gonna be an array of pixels. I mean, okay, so that's one way to do it. Um, there's another way to, by the way, there's there's another way to do this, which is you could also do um, pixels equals uh, array of pixels, and then you can do that too. Both ways are acceptable. Both ways do the same exact thing. Um, all right, so now we've got an empty array of pixels. We've got to add to that array, right? And so we want to. So this this is better because you're creating this whole array of pixels and then you're plunking them all down at the same time. So this is a more efficient way of drawing it out. Um, but you have to go through four. It says for each x value and then for each y value, then you want to plunk a pixel down and add it to the array. So you're, okay. So uh, for each, each x, I'm going to say for each x in x, you can also just do for x and x if you want. I'm going to make it a little easier. For x and x, um, and actually you have to do not just x, but you want to do x through x plus the width minus 1. Okay, now let me tell you how I got to this. So we're just for looping in, we're for looping through the x is the starting position through the starting position plus the width. So the x 
starting position of the x of the block, and then how wide is the block? Minus 1, because the dumb box frame starts at 0. So um, that gives us this number, and this number is, I'm going I'm to rename it so it's not just x for um, x position. And uh, and then, so we should probably, I would just probably print this out at first. So print out x position just to kind of see this working. And then let's call the function. Let's not actually do anything with it yet. Let's just make sure the print is printing right and it's nothing wrong with it. So we're going to call speedy block function. Speedy block starts at, let's start it at 0, 0.0, .0 just to make it start at the bottom. And let's make it 3 pixels wide, 3 pixels high, color of red. play here and uh, let's look down here um, 0 1 2 okay so it is doing it right I'm gonna actually get rid of this nested print also because it's messing up my print statements so I'm just gonna comment it out for now 0 1 2 okay great it's kind of working there we still have our old way and here's the new way um, it's not printing anything to the screen yet but it is showing up that we're actually we're getting numbers here. We're getting this x position, which is great. <sighs> okay, so now we've got that x position, but we need the y position also. So we got to do another for loop inside this. Well, typically, when you nest for loops, that actually isn't usually the best possible way, the most efficient way, but it's more efficient than the last way we're doing it. So it's, it's a step in the right direction, right? So it's like the similar kind of thing for y in y through y plus height minus 1. Okay. So it's pretty much the same stuff. y plus height minus 1. And you see how similar these are? We could almost make this into a function itself. But okay, we're not going to do that yet. Um, and, uh, and then we've got the y position and the x position. So then I think we've got to make a pixel and add it to the array. So how you do that is we made this thing called pixels already. And you do pixels.append. And we're appending a new element. It's a pixel element. So remember, when you create the pixel element, add some parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we can hit escape like we learned earlier to see how many different ways there are to make a pixel. It looks like there's just one way to make a pixel here. X, Y, color. All right. So X will do... Um, the x position that we just made. And for y, we'll do the y position that we just made. And for color, we're going to make the color red. Dot red. Okay. Actually, no, this is wrong again. Wrong again. Make the color color. So whatever color we pass in. Okay, so now it's red because we say it's red down here for speedy block definition. Okay, so now it's appending the pixels to this array. So let's instead of printing the x position, let's just print out uh, pixels. Let's see, uh, add pixels dot count. So let's pix print out how many pixels we've we've collected once we get to speedy block down here. And um, okay, yeah, counts all the way up to nine, nine pixels. So now why is it not drawing? Well, it's not drawing because we're not telling it to draw. Um, let's look at the instructions here. Batch set the pixels in the array. Um, I see. So there's like something called batch set. So after the for loop, so we're done with our whole for loop, and after the for loop is down here, now we're going to take the display and batch set the pixels with the array of pixels that we got. So it's going to be pixels. Let's see. Run it. Cool. Sort of. Right? It seems to have worked. I'm going to get rid of my print statement here. Now I'm wondering if the red block isn't behind the blue block here, right? Let's start it over here instead, shall we? So let's move it over. X coordinate will be uh, 30. I don't know if that's going to be too far or not. We'll see. 
There it is over there. All right, cool. So we'll make it instead of 30, let's make it 20. Let's put it up one pixel so it matches. And boom. Okay. So let's do an experiment here and let's make the height of it uh, 30 and the width of it um, 10. And let's make this one 10, 30 also. The blue one, 10, 30. Oh, it already is. Wonderful. Okay, so let us run it and see which one's faster. Well, it doesn't get down. It doesn't get down to the screen. Uh, so it completes this blue one first, and then it comes down here to the speedy block. Let's go ahead and uh, comment out the blue block altogether. So the slow block is here. So we're just going to not call it, and we'll see if the speedy block is faster. It seemed to arrive on the screen faster. So I'm going to comment out the speedy block now and then uncomment the other block, see if it's slower. Oh yeah, do you see it filled up like that? Whereas the speedy block happened quicker. So I'm gonna uncomment them both so that I can see them side by side again. Um, even though, yeah, great, wonderful. Now my instructor can just see that I've done them both. Da -da -da! Oh my God, we're only on page five. This assignment is taking forever. This uh, assignment, uh, I'm going to make this uh, two-parter series. So this will be the first part of my uh, instruction video on how to complete the pixel assignment. And then we'll continue with pages 6 through 13 for the next video.